Welcome back to Fluffy Chops Tops of Wars 2019. Assuming you've watched yesterday's video, if you haven't, go into the description to go watch yesterday's Tops of Wars 2019. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a bit. Now that you have done that, or you have already done that and just waiting, well don't worry, it's time to talk about the good to the best games I play for FC players. Let's begin! So, here is the good to the best games of Fluffy Chops Tops of Wars 2019. At number 1, Russian Subway Dogs. I just finished this game 4 weeks ago, and wow, this game was heck of fun to play. This has a very interesting gameplay element, where you must keep eating to stay alive till the train you need comes along. But you also would need a good enough score to pass for the train doors to open to pass the level, meaning you're going to have to learn how to juggle fast-ish to get the bones and the boss fights are not like the other levels at all and I would say they're like the second fun thing about the game is just the boss fights you know they're interesting they're, they're usually different in each each boss fight but yeah they're just not like the other levels at all you go as as you go up in levels though it starts to throw everything at you like what station has a bear and an elk trying to kill a dog or a cat or a raccoon thing? Whatever station it is, I sure don't want to hop on room trains. Once some drop some vodka, we're all going to die on that train. Number two. Mubble it up. Or as I say, mubble it up. <laughs> I like to call it like that. I enjoyed the small puzzles to finish this level and I very much enjoyed the gameplay of these power-ups to use. My favourite is the grav, the grav one, where the whole level gets very creative and kind of trippy. I know I didn't show it off in the video, but if I could re-edit that video, I would show you off the grav. But you know the thumbnail to that video that I will show again? Right here is what the grav looks like in most levels. Cool, right? <laughs> But yeah, I like the game and I very much enjoy the changing changing the marble so you're not just stuck looking at the exact same marble ball over and over again as you do these levels. And the difficulty to these levels are alright, it gets harder over time slowly and the soundtrack was very much to my liking with the house music in it. Number 3 Planet Zoo I loved Planet Coaster. I've even put 304 hours into that game at the time of recording anyways, there's probably a bit more now, but <laughs> so when I found out they were making a new game that even had the name Planet in the title, my hopes for this game were high and I was excited for it and when we got to see a bit of gameplay at E3, I was one of them very overly excited people and after the show I pre-ordered it right away, what is kind of like my first ever pre-order on at, watch after watching E3, I don't think I've ever really pre-ordered anything but yeah, it was my first ever pre-order stuff. Because after seeing it at E3, I was positive this game was going to be great, and it sure was. And hands down, out of all the games that have been released this year, this is the best game of the year, I feel. It's great, the game does take from Planet Coaster and the Jurassic World Evolution that they've done, and using both stuff from them games made this lovely zoo game out of it. You know you wanna buy it. <laughs> I can't seem to tell you what will be next year's best game of the year, but my hopes for the new Doom game, if you know who doesn't fuck it up. And maybe watching Overscore Dogs, probably. Number four. Fight and Rage. Oh wow, this game is so cool. What you do, is fight and rage. Well not really for me though, it's the other way round. I get angry or rage, then I go play this game and it starts to calm me down as I mash my controller destroying everyone in my way. This game has turned into a nice stress relief for me. I just love the arcade look to the game as I don't know any other games that make your screen look and even feel like you're looking at an arcade machine screen. But you can turn it off if you wish. Still, you still have to deal with it looking 8-bit though, but yeah, I just love the looks and the gameplay of it, and it has lots of endings to see at this point. I've done, I'm going to start from left to right, so G-E, G-H, then I got 
R B R C. Then I got F E, and that's all the endings I have unlocked so far. But basically, you know, of course I'm gonna try and get all of them. So yeah, great game in my eyes. Has some playability to it when you finish, and is fun. I highly recommend you play the storyline of the saving the girl at the first level because I will say that's probably the best um, storyline in the story. Once you have finished the story once, you unlock co-op as well as AI to help you on your fight. You know, that's a bit of a shame because, you know, you've got to at least finish the story once to have actual co-op. You can't have co-op immediately, but at least you eventually unlock it. And like I said, it's kind of like a reward. It's like, yes, I can now play with other people and friends now. But for AI, I would say it always rushes in if you're ready or not. So I tend not to play with the AI. Plus they get better scores than I do. <laughs> Brr, fucking AI. And I think that ruins it, but not much, is you're stuck on normal or hard setting at the start of the game. You would have to buy the easy mode setting in the shop and it costs like a bit quite a bit of money so you'd have to be playing on normal or hard and um, for a little bit of the way but eventually once you buy that you know and you you play it on easy then you can actually get a really really feel of the game and you go okay i know how to play it and now i can play on normal without no difficulty and maybe do hard and you know you should really start with the girl first what i didn't do the girl is the most easiest one to get a grip of how the game is as she is really fast and well chaotic sometimes you don't even know what's going on you're just beating the enemies down like nothing and the most satisfying thing i like to do is grab my enemy and slam them to the ground on top of another enemy always gives me a feel of i'm that great at the game no matter if i lost a life a few seconds ago and now the number five best game i've played for fc plays is wonder boy the dragon's trap the soundtrack is just wonderful it's the best part of the game i say just listen to probably the best song in the soundtrack <laughs> Doesn't that make you want to go on an adventure? I know it makes me feel like in the mood to go on an adventure. And for the look of the game, mwah, just spot on. When they said we are going to remake an old game, they sure did make a great remake. I loved every bit of it and it was very hard at the end, but I did it and I streamed from start to finish when with this game when I used to stream regularly and I loved every second of it. Sure, there was times when I didn't like the game and these times were when I died and had to walk and fight all the way back to where I was before. Um, What's well, a bit of a shame because it's like, sure, okay, you were trying to go for the old, you know, you know, it's an old game and that's how old games used to be like. But seriously, I felt, I felt like you should, we should have had checkpoints in the game. But just looking back on it, I feel that doesn't matter. Still a wonderful game in my eyes. I'm glad I tried this game. It's games like this that made me want to do Fluffy Chops Plays series to play games I normally wouldn't play and find new games that I would I would like or dislike. If I saw like a big model of the dragon from the game, I would so spend £140 on it for sure. But I already do have this. This game to me is the best game I've ever played for FC Plays this year as well as the best game I've played overall this year and I kind of want to go finish the game a fifth time, what I think I may do at, over Christmas depending on if I get a game at Christmas that is. Now that you have found out what and why I ranked these games as good to best, it's time to have a little look at three games that always went onto the list and short reasons why they are good but not as good as the rank ones. Quake Champions Great Reboot is very much like Quake 3 Arena, what to me is the best Quake, so to me this is also a great Quake game, but 
it's starting to lose player base, what is a shame, but that could be due to everyone all, always picking the exact same three maps over again. There is still like five maps I've never got to play, thanks to no one voting for them, and I'm and I'm always getting outvoted when I try to vote for them. So that's probably why less and less more people are playing it now. Untitled Goose Game was going to put Fallout 76 here, but after the Fallout first happened, it doesn't deserve that. But anyways, this game was fun to play, and I oddly enjoyed just being a dick to everyone and just honking at everyone. I just enjoyed, enjoyed it, and I a little bit enjoyed the puzzles, and I've probably almost finished the game, I think. I'm not so sure. Duke Nukem Forever. This was fun to play, and I laughed at the times when it embraced the crazy. I felt like I was playing a new Saints Row title. And apart from the jumping puzzles, this game is pretty fun to play. And I just felt like, what have I been missing out on all this time? I felt I should have played, played this sooner in its life. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be sure not to miss a FC Plays video or other video series that I'm doing that you may like. All the videos I have shown are linked in the description if you wish to watch the full videos of them, that the games I've shown on this video. I can't wait to play even more FC Plays games next year that I've never played before. So, like I said, thank you for watching, hope to see what episode it may be, and goodbye!